What's good, YouTube? You already know who it is, man. It's your boy, cute that rude boy, aka hey, the Wave Man, 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 man. We back at the like crack addicts, man. Stop playing on me. Stop playing on me and stop playing on me. Look, we back at it today with another video on the Wave Monopoly. Let's go crazy, man. Look, today I'm coming at y'all with five things to do before you even start recording your vocals at your home recording studios to make sure you get the best quality that you can get in your home studio. Let's get right into the prank thing thing. But before that, guys, make sure you follow me on Instagram at QDRUBOY. Make sure you hit subscribe because I don't like I don't like people just staring at me, just looking at me. You feel me? Let's not go there, but just hit that subscribe button, man. Make sure you thumbs up the video and comment anything you want to learn next down in the comment section below. But I ain't gonna hold y'all too much, man. We gonna get right into the prank thing thing. Let's get right to it, man. Look, first things first, guys. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do when you're getting any dog, okay? This applies to any dog that you guys are working in, whether that's Pro Tools, FL Studios, Logic, Hableton. <laughs> you get it. Any DAW, so just take the concepts, guys, and just apply it in your own DAWs, and let's get right into the prank thing. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do, guys, is turn down the beat. Okay. And why do I say turn down the beat, guys? It's because you're gonna wanna give yourself some room to record, all right? Lots of times, people just get a, a beat that they got off the internet, these beats are fully mixed and mastered. So you just throw it in there and then you're just, you're fighting against the beat. And so you're trying to turn your vocals up and now you're pushing it over the limit. You're, you're peaking, that's what we call peaking. <laughs> so you don't wanna be peaking too crazy. So what you're gonna wanna do guys is simply turn down the beat. So that's what we're gonna do here guys. I'm gonna show you guys what we're talking about right now. Let's get into it. Now, as you guys can see, guys, see I turn the beat down negative six dBs, all right? That's usually what I do every single time I'm getting ready to record, guys. I just turn down the beat negative six dBs. In Pro Tools, I trim it negative six dBs, all right? FL Studios, negative six dBs. And you can see that up here. Now, watch these meters right here as we do that, and you'll see what we're talking about, guys. Okay. The next thing you guys are gonna wanna do is set your BPM. Yes, you're gonna wanna do this, especially in FL Studios before you even start recording because if you set your BPM after you already recorded, it'll set things off, all right? In Pro Tools, you can do this at any time, but like I said, guys, I'm telling you what to do before. So we wanna do this before. All right, so you wanna set your BPM. There's lots of ways to find out the BPM. If you get a beat for lease, lots of times the producer will put it right here in the beat title, you know, there's some producers that go <laughs> up, up, and away, and beyond, and, and do the most so that you are able to easily pop their beat in. So, like I said, guys, what you're gonna wanna do is set the BPM. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna set the BPM for this beat. It is 101 BPM, simple as that, all right? Now, the reason you're gonna wanna do this is, like I said, guys, delay. This is so that your delays are gonna be on time. Automatically, guys, it will be in the system. For your reverbs, if you wanna find your reverb times, your pre-delay times, you're gonna need your delays, like I said, guys. So this is to make all that easier in post. Boom. Third thing you're gonna to wanna to do, guys, you're gonna to wanna to turn down your buffer size. All right, lots of times people start complaining, saying that they, they hear delays when they're recording. Well, I'm here to save you. The reason why you're hearing delays is because your buffer size is too high. Now, there's rule of thumb, two things that you're gonna need to know about buffer size, guys. Now, first of all, where you go is options, audio settings, and your buffer length right here, guys. Now, there's two things you're gonna wanna understand. When you're recording, you want your buffer length to be short, down, all right? When you're mixing, you want it to be all the way up. Buffer length basically is like your processing power. It, it maximizes and it minimizes your latency. So, like I'll show you guys right here, when you're recording, you wanna be at around 256. Now these numbers will vary depending on the audio interface that you guys have, but if you have a decent audio interface, it will go to 256 at least, and around 124, 248 as you guys can see on the screen. So when you're recording, like I said, go down to 256. Some systems can go lower depending on how strong your computer is, but like I said, 256 you should be fine to record. You shouldn't hear too much latency, no latency at all. And when you're getting ready to mix, guys, you bring it back to 1024. So like I said, guys, we're getting ready to record. So 256 for the buffer length, all right? Simple as that. Fourth thing you're gonna wanna do, guys, is you're gonna wanna definitely wanna pre-mix a track, all right? The reason you're gonna wanna do this is because you're gonna wanna hear 
somewhat of how you're gonna sound on the actual beat now you can record raw but you want to be able to pop it into the effect so that you can really hear what you're trying to come out with because a lot of making a song is understanding in your head how you want it to sound and a lot of people are turned off naturally once they hear a vocal and it's not mixed correctly at all and they're like this is not what I imagined. So, like I said, guys, you're just gonna wanna kinda give yourself a premix. Now, say for instance, we're record recording on insert five. Um, if you don't know by now, guys, we have vocal presets down in the description below. So make sure you check them out, guys, for FL Studios, Pro Tools, and Logic. So make sure you check those out. Those are mixed vocal chains, ready to go. You don't even need to mix. So simple as this, guys. We're gonna do a Young Thug vocal preset. So let's do it, man, Young Thug. Like I said, guys, you're going to want to do a premix. So that's what we're doing right now. This is the Young Thug main vocal preset. Like I said, you can buy it down in the description below. Check it out. There's a link, wavemonopoly.com. Head to it for every dog. So boom, this is premix right here. That's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to mix your vocals a little bit so that you actually sound good. Simple as that. Now, the next thing you guys are going to want to do before you even start recording is make sure your levels are correct. This means your input levels, guys. You don't want vocals that are peaking, all right? Make sure, guys, when you were recording, you never wanted to hit the red. When you are hitting the red, you guys are peaking vocals, all right, guys? Use your eyes as well as your ears, guys. But a lot of time, guys, these graphs, these waves that are being created, you can see kind of when these vocals are being are being distorted peaking peaking vocals you do not want peaking vocals so you just want to make sure that your levels are are getting picked up enough so you want them definitely to get picked up you don't want them whisper tracks you want them to definitely get picked up so still high but not not too low so green about hitting the yellow but never in the red all right green hitting the yellow a little bit and that's a pretty sweet spot to record guys so there you go, guys. Five things to do before you even start recording so that you get that professional sound in any studio. You already know what time it is, man. Wave Monopoly, man. It's a takeover. You dig? Dunzo!